Happy Halloween! I'm the fucking Canuck, and we're gonna play some shitty games there, bud. Can't forget to get fucking dickered there, bud. Erica, I need a toonie so I can go and buy a Mickey there, bud. We're not going out for Halloween. Get me a fucking game, eh? So why did you dress up? Just give me a game. Oh, that's a fucking game changer there, eh, bud? Just to get this out of the way real quick, the game has cards assigned to A, B, Y, and X. Cards are your basic attacks. You consume crystals by using cards. You gain crystals by hitting enemies with your cards. If you run out of crystals, the game takes your health instead. Moving on. We open with a cutscene of a little girl with hair flaxen as the morning sun. A little boy cries and she cries, and then she drops her stupid crap on the ground. I mean, her priceless metal witchery device that criminals would surely steal in five seconds flat after leaving a little body peppered with bloody punctures for some stray dog to chew on. Oh wait, it's the heroine, and she's looking surprisingly bored for someone being chased by actual fucking nightmares. She shows them her favorite Magic the Gathering card, and they fall asleep because she tries to explain how OP it is and how it's an underrated card and all the awesome combos in her deck that it makes possible. She turns into a bird, animes an enemy, and walks out like this shit happens every day. Like she's assaulted by the demons of hell every day. What a cool character, man. And now introducing the Terra Credibility Meter, which will decrease the further she steps into Mary Sue territory. We learn in the story text that the witchery device is called a runestone, and having a runestone pretty much makes you an awesome warrior because you're able to summon... things. The girl's name is Terra Grimface. Wow, I wonder what her personality is going to be. That's about as subtle as World of Warcraft naming conventions. She was abandoned by her parents and grew up trusting no one but wielding immense power? Well, the boxes just check themselves off, don't they? Terra's part of the Scorpions, a band of thieves. Her boss compliments her and she gives him the palm and walks off, leaving the boss to say, Heh, <laughs> women, am I right? She looks off into the stars longingly, perhaps reminiscing of life on her home planet. On the road to the town of Kadishu, we see a bandit in our group named Sol. Something suspicious. Detective K-Bash on the case. Boy and girl. But what could it mean? Hmm. <laughs> In Kadishu, you can pick up the garbage. Then the game soundly criticizes you for being a good human being. Congratulations. I like talking to NPCs and obscure RPGs just so I can see all the fucked up shit that the writers thought would be funny or fitting of the characters. Here's a woman who says you're too pretty to wear ugly clothes. Bye, bitch! A flashback triggers and we see young Terra getting picked on. And this one kid, my god. Just, just listen to this scene. Why don't you just play with some of your monster friends, freak? <laughs> oh, you can play with us if you give us that stone. One demon summoning stone equals two dead children. We meet some guy named Jarvie who's basically the tingle of Lost Kingdoms. You gotta give RPGs credit for writing characters like Jarvie, you know. You save them, and then immediately they press you into service. And there's a sadistic completionist carrot on a stick component attached to the service, and you don't really need to, but you're kind of curious about it, so you actually try for a while, looking for fairies and the rewards are shit, but maybe they get better, and you're just eating macaroni at this point, not really talking to anyone, and your girlfriend doesn't really That, that fairy just impregnated me. That's some finish shit right there, man. Terra and Sol go back to save the bandits from the incoming army. Sol does all the work, further cementing the patriarchal love apparent in this cliched story. The bandits decide to go and steal all the runestones from them. You do all the fucking work. Why is she with these incompetent livestock? What's her motivation? Free rides? Something I shouldn't mention on the fucking internet? What is it? Can we just get rid of poison from games? It's just the fucking worst. I love poison Pokemon. It's the worst. They go deep into a very spooky cave, and nobody notices this guy dying. Bandits start dropping like flies, and of course the boss and Terra are immune to it. We meet this guy from the Hunger Games who plans on ruling the world. I wonder who the villain is! Uh, just a side note, why the fuck? Japan. Okay, come on. 
Feminine men are always villains or joke characters. I get the joke. Like, haha, this guy doesn't look like a masculine individual. Hee hee hee. That's real fucking funny. But kindergartners find this shit funny. Presumably, he's going to take over the world with the power of the gods. Like this one. This boss fight illustrates my general frustration with the combat. The guy hardly drops the necessary crystals to win. The game attempts to remedy this problem by spawning blue fairies who give you health cards or MP, but it's random anyway, and you're limping around trying to dodge attacks. Who the fuck designed this? It's such a frustrating experience, especially if you're a newer gamer and don't grasp the card invincibility mechanic fully. So I just limped back dodging shit, waiting for fairies and pulling a hit and run when I could. I'm putting this on my fucking resume. And then Tara speaks. Her first line of dialogue is... Soul. Her love interest's name. Her love interest with minimal character development who is directly stronger than you despite your power that is considered absolutely essential to the band of the scorpion, and despite the relative uselessness of his love. Can I please get a female protagonist who doesn't suck? This is other M level of power diminishing and subjugation without due cause. She escapes to the forest and Sol goes back through the tunnel to see all of his dead friends and become a deeply scarred man with real personality changes that result from his traumatic experience. Just kidding, he's fine. Did you expect any different? He's got no soul! <laughs> In the forest, Tara meets an old woman who... Likes big balls and lots of them. Wait a minute, the runestone is a unique item that only she possesses and is of great value to her. It's also red in color, symbolic of, my god. This story is about a girl trying to survive in a disgusting patriarchy whilst protecting her virginity and trying to figure out who she can trust to share her troubled life with. Or it's vapid stock genre garbage. Your choice. No, no, why? I don't want to play this game anymore. No. On the way to the Kendari castle, you find a town razed to the ground by the army. This old blind man wants to tell you an important story. Uh, maybe next time, Gramps. That is, if you don't get your skull bashed in by that robot. This guy wants water. At least we can turn the fountain on. Oh, it was poisoned. <laughs> Dumbass. My Terra is such a charming protagonist. We meet the king again, and he says this. Without the real runestone, she'll never be able to use her gold. The queen is... Yugi Moto? Why does everyone hate me? Because you're a helpless bint, please lob yourself into a ditch post haste. Sol asks Tara if she's remembering her past, but doesn't actually tell her anything when she says no. What the fuck? Why? You, you know. You fucking know, you asshole. Sol and Tara open a door together. Symbolism. Her name is Audrey Anu. The queen's name is Rashi Anu. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Good names. Good games. The queen takes Terra's runestone and is a giant f***ing for literally no reason. Her voice is so obnoxious. I'm sure you understand, dear sister. Cutscene revealing Terra was the twin daughter of the queen. Why was she picked to be abandoned? Was she the shitty child or something? The queen hands over her only weapon that makes her a worthwhile threat to anything. You heard me, the rune stone is the only reason that any of these characters are strong. You know what I like about Samus? Even without the suit, she's a competent fighter. This royal family? Useless. Sky sure is blue today. Oh no! Oh, I'm gonna get you. Ah! Oh no! Little scenes like this disempower the player without good cause. I get that they want to build a romance, but it's forced. Soul hardly has any dialogue for an RPG. I don't give a fuck about him. Why should I care that he cuts a pillar to show off? Why should I care that he plays cutesy gentleman during a time of crisis? He's a doucher. Tara should be helping him with some summoned monster to lift a pillar off of him. That's far more interesting and empowering for this character who's basically continuing her problem seen at the start of the game. 
The couple is cornered by robots that they've easily defeated up until this point. I guess Soul's crystals were just low. He tosses her into the elevator, even though he could easily climb on himself instead of being an egomaniac. And she's so turned on, she slams herself against the railings. Oh, is that my career in the toilet? Is that my career gone? Oh, okay, yeah, yep, it's gone. Goodbye. Bye, bitch! Tara escapes and heads elsewhere. You kill a dragon in the mountains, whatever. Turns out your sister, the queen, is alive in a cathedral. She acts like a five-year-old because she's a little butt frustrated for losing. She admits that she was scared that the people would discover that the runestone was missing so she'd be a worthless queen, and likely overthrown. That's actually an interesting setup, honestly. Should have been working that angle from the start. You lump looking ass numpties. Ah, the old awkward GameCube sausage fingers and picture face. It's about time I mentioned the cult. This game features a cult of strange individuals who communicate using Moonspeak. They're extremely sassy, expose their chests, and have long flowing hair. They're also carbon copies of one another in different colors. So they're basically Cali Beach Girls. Oh baby, that's whack. As you prance about the countryside traversing dragon boneyards and ancient bridges, you'll kill several of these people whose souls are immediately swallowed into their books upon defeat. Defeating a certain enemy in the mansion and taking all the cultist books unlocks Isamat Erber. It, I don't like it. And its deepest chambers. So here I am in the cultist base. Hey, did you ever play Silent Hill 4? I got something to show you. What the fuck is that? What is that? Okay, made it out of there. I gotta beat the game. Oh my god, is that... Is it possible? Yes! This game finally fucking delivered! Oh! Only his rotting flesh and desecrated corpse could make this better. Now you get to kill the Emperor. We fought long and hard to get to this moment, and he's mocked us at every turn. This battle will be just as meaningful as the journey, and the reward will engrave every step in gold in my memory. For such an act as kill a kid, and he's dead. Now to the top of the castle, but the room is empty. Ah, but you can't fool me. I've been around that blockbuster a few times if you know what I'm saying. There's definitely a boss battle around here somewhere. <laughs> Hey, you gonna finish that game? I won't go back in. I've been spooked one spook too many. I have to make a call. I'm Scare Thrills, and I just got a call that there's a fucking jump scare in this house. So you know what we're gonna do? Kill the fucking jump scare. Residents tell me that there's a fucking jump scare behind this door. So you're gonna take your pistol and cock that shit. We're gonna go in nice and quiet here. Die, you fucking jump scare! Down, you fucking eye! I spear her nether regions and she goes down, but not before offering a half baked double edged sword for the human race. Yeah, okay, you're pretty much the worst Eldritch abomination ever, and I'm putting you back in your box. This game has two endings. The bad one is simple. Sol is dead and the queen takes Terra to see the people after Terra talks to her younger self, who apparently is her invisible friend and mostly only friend. I think her sister and maybe Jarvie are her only living friends and none of them seem like people she'd hang out with, so she's kind of alone forever. Which pleases me immensely because she's a piece of cardboard and I'd rather watch cardboard suffer than find real happiness. The good ending involves Sol living and staying with Terra forever. I will not be bothered to get the good ending. And now that we've slain the bullshit, it's time for the death knell for those who fell in the creation of this video.
<laughs> Whoa, you made it to the end of the video. Be sure to bash the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you care to see more of my content, you can click the Survival Kids annotation down below. There's a lot more planned, including new K-Bash episodes, very funny jokes, and other content that you don't need to know about yet. Thanks so much for watching my video, and stay tuned for more.